Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you find yourself, Fudge Dice Roll here, and we are back on the Farming Simulator 22 here in Iowa Plains, and we have something unfortunate that has happened. So uh, we were doing this uh, field here for Clifford Powell, Cliff, good old Cliff Powell, uh, fellow farmer there that we uh, we, we know from uh, the Ag Hall, and... Uh, we had an in-game issue happen, so uh, we were f harvesting field one here for him, and the the problem is is that I had actually completed and finished harvesting, and so all the rest of the crops you see here are crops that were going to be money crops for me, uh, just extra that's left over that I could go sell. Uh, the problem is is that I had actually saved and quit the game with this still left here, and when I reloaded the game to be able to record... Um, it told me I no longer have access to the land. So all of this, and there's still a pretty sizable portion of crops here on the field. Um, all of this is unharvestable for me. So I can't harvest anything that is here on this field, which really blows because this would have very easily been a second bin worth of beets for me to turn in. I mean, there's, it's a very, um, uh, here, let's actually go to the construction mode. Uh, so we can take a look. Like, this is a very sizable chunk here. Uh, this would have very much been... Because <laughs> when I came back, I was over here with the vehicle. And, uh, yeah, this would have been a very sizable chunk. I mean, just look at the, the truck in relation to this here. So, uh, yeah, I had planned on kind of recording some, uh, some B-roll footage of me finishing the fuel up and coming into things. But... That is not optional for me now. So uh, I think what's going to happen is two things here. Uh, I'm going to run this truckload of red beets in, and then I'm going to go ahead and fill this again using the power tools menu uh, just to make sure that I'm getting all of the money. Uh, there's 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 definitely enough here that I would have had two more truckloads of beets. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead... Hop in the vehicle here. We're going to make our way to the dumping point. Uh, and as you might notice, we do have quite a discrepancy with funds right now, too. And that is because I went ahead and took out a loan to outright... or I, I increased my, uh, my, my loan, uh, my line of credit with the bank, so that I could outright purchase that vehicle there... Uh, just because I was having some issues with trying to modify the vehicle because I did not own it. Uh, so, but yeah, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna take this load here. We're gonna drop it off, and we have to do a lot of vehicle maintenance. This vehicle is absolutely filthy. Um, we're gonna go drop off this load. I'm going to spawn an additional load of red beets into the uh, tipper trailer here, and then. I will cancel out the contract. Well, not cancel the contract, complete the contract. The contract itself is, in fact, completed. Harvesting is completed. Uh, and then we will use that money to pay back. Uh, on our loan, we were at uh, our line of credit. We were at, uh, we still owed the bank $250,000. And so we're going to get back down to that line as close as possible with the uh the income and whatever we have left will be our operating cost so this was not how i expected things to go down i thought i was going to be able to harvest that i guess i'm still going to get my money's worth out of this anyway because i am going to kind of you know i don't want to say cheat in but i will be kind of uh you know getting what i was owed which is why i took this long contract my goodness uh as you can see it's the second day of august and we're at uh, 11 o'clock at night and i mean it took me even with that 5.4 meter working with it took me quite a number of hours uh irl in order to get that field taken care of so but that's fine you know that's why we have fun things to listen to like uh like documentaries and, and podcasts uh a fun podcast that i quite enjoy is an actual play podcast of a single well, it's not a single player uh you can it's it's primarily based towards solo play 
Uh, but it, it is a tabletop roleplay system called Iron Sworn, Starforged, and it is really awesome. It's written by a very talented uh, developer, uh, Sean Tompkin, and uh, it. I watch. I like to listen to the podcast called The Bad Spot, which you can find here on YouTube. Uh, Matt Risby, and he is a phenomenal storyteller, and so that is uh, what I listen to when I'm doing these long. Uh, field missions uh, you know when I'm kind of recording some b-roll and what not to play uh, we're going to go ahead and fill the vehicle again it, um, red beats where are you at red beats there you are and we will sell the second batch of red beats um, okay this is not we didn't get any money from this red okay no there they okay we got three thousand dollars that does not feel right fun i'm on with my game sudden running into a lot of issues like fifty thousand one ninety four Okay, maybe that is right. All right, well, hot damn. <laughs> okay, the game is saving. Yeah, okay. Hmm. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and turn this in. This is collect our funds. And we're going to go ahead and pay on our loan that we out in order to do things. We're at 4 Okay. So let us pay down to. 50. So we have $34,771 left over right now in operational funds. But we do have a nice large piece of equipment now in the form of that uh, harvester, which can harvest uh, beets, potatoes, all kinds of things. So we're going to get all of our equipment back to the farm proper. Uh, get everything kind of lined up and ready in front of the wash rack. Get all that kind of situated, squared away. And we will be back at the start of September so that we can... We have a lot of stuff on the docket to get done. We have uh, we have grass care and harvesting. Have uh, I believe that we have our soybean harvesting. So there's a lot of stuff to do on the farm proper now. And uh, we'll be holding off contract work. I had decided, uh, instead of doing three days per season set to a 5x speed, that I would, in fact, do two-day season with a 3x speed. So that is what we're going to do from now on uh, until we either own too many fields and we have to kind of increase it to three 3x days. But I feel like that's going to be quite far and away from what we have going on now. So, so yeah, uh, if we keep going along this way, you'll actually notice here off to the side, there is our vehicle right there. That is our new harvesting vehicle way, way over there. And that is going to be awesome. Uh, but yeah, I am going to get back onto the farm, get everything situated and I will catch you guys uh, next month. So see you then. All right, we are back. It is September, and we have some uh, we have some dirty equipment that needs to be lovingly clean. So uh, yeah, so here is our new man TGS. Uh, this thing was an absolute. Oh, I didn't change the license plate. Wonder if I can do that from here. That from here. Can't do that from here. Dang it. All right. I'm going to have to change a few license plates, it looks like. Uh, see, I changed this. I changed this one. Look at how absolutely filthy this thing got. I mean, at the amount of hours we ran this out in that field. Uh, two hours. Uh, it was longer than two. I guarantee I tell you, it was definitely longer than two hours. Um, but, oof. This baby is filthy. Let's go ahead and clean her off. 
So this is a nice piece of kit here. Uh, I have no idea where I'm gonna put this. Oh, actually, I'll probably go ahead and put it where I have our other uh, combine. I'll have to make some room for it, I think. Uh, I'll have to probably go pull the other combine out, park this in the back end, because this is only gonna kind of come out uh, not too terribly often. But we do outright own this uh, this uh, Terrados T4. Head pop into here. See that the only things that we don't own right now is we don't own this uh, crampy trailer, and we don't actually header with the potato add-on. So, um. I own the header. So confused. Yeah, I own this header right here. I have the potato add on. Let's figure that out. Oh, let's go ahead and clean this too while we're at it. <laughs> um, clean the header off here. And we're to figure out uh, where to put this header at while we're at it. But yeah, so now we'll be able to do. Um, uh, so we'll, now we'll be able to do uh, beets, carrots, parsnips, potatoes, sugar beets. So red beets, sugar beets, carrots, parsnips. I don't know so much about sugar cane and cotton. I'm kind of confused about those two. Uh, but they're also things that I have zero interest in farming. Uh, just not something I want to farm, but I would not mind uh, sticking to, uh, corn and soybeans and potentially potatoes. Uh, potatoes are pretty profitable. I'm not quite sure about carrots and all that. If we can actually take here. Uh, carrots, 100 parsley, red beet. There's the mighty potato. Where are you hiding? Far up. Sugar beets. Yeah, so potatoes. Yeah, potatoes. 374. That's not bad. Might do some potatoes as well. Look at this thing, though. An absolute unit, if there ever was. Go ahead and turn our engine on. Now, the question is, where can I pull... That header too, where it's not going to be in the way of anything. But I can definitely fit this there in the back. Yeah, there's plenty of room to fit these in there side by side. Oh, you know what? I'll just pull this around the back side here because there's no. Uh, it's not a through through entrance. So we'll just pull this alongside the back half here. On. Should numbers like such. There we go. Yay! Let's check that out. All right. Yeah, this thing is an absolute unit, and I am looking forward to getting some more uh, root crop harvesting going on. Like I said before, uh, just having that three meter working header just was not enough for me in the past. But being able to have one that's nearly double the size, it just kind of makes it more. Uh, makes it makes it more feasible for me to be interested in doing that level of harvesting uh, that that type of material rather okay, let, that's I don't want to pull you too far off to where I can't comfortably get out or get in rather so let's kind of bring you up and over this way and I feel like that is efficient enough space yeah oh Oh, as long as we don't get trapped behind our ladder here. <laughs> All right, let's get you in there. Okay. Gonna be a little bit of a tight squeeze. I don't want to clip my mirrors there. Oh, yeah, look at that. Plenty of room. Plenty of room for these two vehicles. And let's take a look here in the cab. Look at have our little passenger here. Uh, nice, simple hydrostatic system here. Really simple. Simple. 
just all in all awesome piece to have here on the farm i did not start the engine but that's okay take a look here at things all right not bad not bad all things considered all right up for now uh we aren't going to be harvesting soybeans until uh, until october so what we have on the docket for today it is a noontime pickup from the local uh from the local farmers market they're going to be coming by to pick up our greenhouse goods which will be nice because definitely use funds um that crap uh, then we actually we have a couple of uh, kind of have a couple flats of eggs that we need to run into town as well, and we have our grassland care to take care of uh, for our field. So that is uh, going ahead, getting out there, uh, mowing, windrowing, all that jazz. Let's take a peek at what we're looking at here, uh, production wise, with our head of, our fifty head of cattle that we have. Uh, we have, okay, we got 23,000 liters of milk. I'm going to need to make a call to the dairy and the bakery in town. Uh, see what we're looking like price wise there, because we are kind of in survival mode right now with our funds. Uh, we paid everything back down our $250,000 debt balance. And we are a little tight on money right now. That is fine because we are doing really good also i did talk about uh getting rid of our uh pig barn here and kind of come down here we come down here we take a look at uh, we can see that for animals for pigs um need to have kind of a mix of things so we're gonna need to have corn uh we're gonna need to have some grains soybeans potatoes all this other stuff so you have to have a base so we'll need to have corn or sorghum then grains when we'll you eat or barley uh protein soybeans canola or sunflowers and then a root crop so we are planning on growing corn we are planning on growing soybeans and we are planning on growing potatoes now that throws us out for wheats or barley so we will have a base we'll have a protein and a root crop but we won't have a grain uh, I would like to have pigs, but I did talk with some of the uh, local people at the egg, and a lot of people were interested in kind of piecing out parts from our uh, this this setup here. And a pretty nice sum of money was actually offered to me, uh, roughly around seventy thousand dollars. Which I mean, uh, most of these fans and stuff. This was all new when we purchased the property. And by new, I mean it was used for probably about uh, three to five years before we actually got the farm property here. So all of these, uh, all these feed silos, electrical, everything here, it's all in really good working order and condition. And they said they could have demo crews out here, kind of strip everything down uh, over the winter time. So I think that's what's going to happen. I think. Um, I think after after November, I think what we're going to have done is we're going to have all this kind of stripped out and uh, going into next year, uh, we'll have this kind of area here freed up. All this will be out of here. We'll collect what kind of money we can. But uh, right now, the goal is to jump here into our smaller John Deere, our uh, 6155. All right, yeah, yeah, 6155R. We're going to hop into this bad boy and make our way down there, get the field mode, get everything good down there, bailed up, headed up, windrowed, the whole nine yards, and get everything uh, loaded up and into our bale storage or over wind. So... If we come down here, we take a look at our bale storage. We are doing really good. I might even see about trying to sell some materials to other farmers. We're looking at 51 bales of straw, 21 bales of silage, 26 bales of hay. So I'm going to focus on doing more silage out of this because I believe I can sell silage at a higher price. Uh, if we take a look at our almanac sheet here, 
see what silage is versus hay. Yeah, come come around January. That is gonna be a good time for us to um way better than hay, way better than grass. Uh this fermented silage is awesome to get sold around uh, January. That's gonna help kind of get some more funds here. Uh milk milk is looking good. Ooh, like December, January is gonna be the time to be selling our milk. Hey, actually it's Milk prices aren't that bad right now. Might go ahead and run some dairy in first before we do it. But I think that's what's going to happen. I'm going to get hooked up to our little trailer here, hook it up to the uh, to the pickup truck, and we're going to run a few loads of dairy milk into town and try to uh, kind of recover some uh, money. It looks like it's gonna rain, so I don't know. I don't know what's uh what's the uh, the forecast looking. Um, we can probably get the grass. Okay, so it's gonna start raining about two o'clock. That should be fine. Uh, the farmers market people will be pick up at noon. They'll be out of our hair. Forty now. Should be able to finish getting the field cut. Time. All right. Uh. Yeah, I think what's going to happen is we're going to make a few runs in and then we're going to start cutting the field, hopefully before the rain starts. Uh, if it starts raining, we're probably going to have to let the field sit and dry, uh, you know, before we can get the grass uh, headed, wrapped and what have you. So I'm going to make a few runs now of material, not materials, but uh, products, milk and uh, the eggs that we have into town. And then we'll kind of go from there. So I will check back in with you guys once we have our errands done. All right, well, uh, we got this field taken care of before the rain started. This is great. Uh, we also were able to get a large batch, uh, a.k.a. all of the milk that we had uh, here in our 
uh, storage tanks. We were able to get it all sold between the bakery and the restaurant, uh, earning us a nice tidy sum of money. We'll go ahead and take a look at our financial ledger here. And we will see that in sold milk, we had $27,000, $5,700 between eggs and our greenhouse goods. So not doing too bad, not doing too bad. All right. And so the field is done. We ended up getting a total of 30 bales with the exception of I did make a little goof. I wasn't taking, I didn't take time to take a look at the baler because it is a bale and wrapper combo i wasn't paying any attention and i had the bale size set too large for the tolerance of the wrapping bar so i have one massive grass bale here um which is annoying but we have uh, 29 of the good well-wrapped silage bales these are going to be great uh we're going to be able to get a nice little chunk of money out of the get them all loaded up onto the bail wagon and uh, make our way up out of here. Huh. Our door and let's go ahead and get this uh, bailer uh, taken back to the barn and we'll probably go ahead and get it nice and sprayed up to cleaned off. And the only thing we have left to do is to come back here, grab all these bales uh, of silage, get them over to our e-tunnel so they can ferment in their plastic wrapping. And then come December, January, we'll go take run these down to the, the livestock sales yard where we are going to be able to secure a decent profit for them. You see here, we uh, we haven't had a chance to wash the windrow yet either, so kind of pull things up and along. And get them over here. Make our way back up. Oh, actually, no. Our, uh, our bail wagon, our bail collection wagon is over here by the E-Tunnel. That's right, I left it here after dropping off the last batch of things. All right, go ahead and get hooked up to this. Get this out here. All right, so all we have left to do is to grab all that and then roll the field. I might even see about trying to uh, get a good price match from the uh, local uh, like ag survey and see about getting this field checked out here for soil composition because it probably wouldn't be a bad idea for me to try to get uh, some lime onto this field before we roll the field and roll it. So. Yeah, we're just gonna get all these bales picked up here. And we will work on uh, getting everything else ready and set for our October being harvest as well as getting things prepped for the demolition and parts parting out of the uh of the setup for the pigs the pig the pig barn and uh, yeah so yeah on, on the on the schedule we got soybeans got that being dismantled we have going into the winter and all the winter field prep that needs to be done. Actually, I'm going to need to prep uh, field 10. Or uh, the field that we harvested wheat from earlier this year. I'm going to need to prep field 10 with a cover crop for the winter. So I should probably try to do that this month rather than next month. Ah, uh, right. So many little working parts. So many moving parts. A little time. <laughs> 